There are a litany of new PlayStation 4 RPGs still to come in 2020. Yes, I know we are looking ahead to the PlayStation 5, but the PS4 is not out yet. And as far as RPGs go, it's definitely stacked with a lot of interesting titles. And I want to cover 10 of those for the rest of 2020 in this video. Obviously, more games might be announced. I would expect them to be announced. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. And starting things off, we'll just get the biggest one right out of the way. Maybe you guys would disagree on it, but Cyberpunk 2077, I think, is is safely the biggest upcoming RPG of 2020. Now, this is a game done by CD Projekt Red, and you guys know what they're all about. They make some amazing games. Witcher 3, in particular, is widely considered to be one of the best RPGs of all time. I personally really enjoyed it. I think it's fundamentally a perfect single-player game, or as close to perfect as you can be. Great story, great visuals, uh, compelling characters, gameplay solid. I know the gameplay is a little bit divisive to some people, and that is generally the issues I see brought about, but I thought it was very, very engaging, especially some of the tactics-based things that you can employ in the game I really did enjoy, and of course, from a narrative standpoint, they are really, really bar setters in that regard. Cyberpunk 2077 is looking fantastic, and based on what we've heard from from the critics getting an early look at the game and just based on the fact that We've seen 50 minutes of gameplay, and that gameplay looked incredible. The level of customization, the level of depth that's going to be in this game is going to be staggering. And while we won't be getting it at its original May release date, I mean, it was in a different timeline, maybe the game would have already been out. But no, it won't be coming in May, it won't be coming in September, but hopefully by November 19th, we'll finally get our hands on the game. And it will be getting a PlayStation 5 upgrade sometime down the line, and you'll get that for free if you do cop the PlayStation 4 version. So that's very exciting. Next up, we have Chris Tales. Now, this is a game that a lot of you guys probably don't know about, but it is a beautiful RPG. It's an indie love letter to classic JRPGs with a new perspective. Peer into the past, act in the present, and watch as your choices dynamically change the future all on one screen as you play. Join the newly awakened time mage Chris Bell and her fantastical companions on their journey across a dark fairy tale world facing a grim future. Game visually, again, looks super stunning. Very unique art style employed in this one, so definitely give this a look if you have not yet done so. It's one that is going very under the radar. It's being published by uh, Modus Games, and they've published some pretty interesting titles, but this one, from a visual standpoint, one of the best games I've seen. I really dig the art style. Maybe it won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I give them a lot of credit for originality. Next up, a JRPG franchise that you guys know I adore, The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4. Yes, the Trails of Cold Steel uh, story will be concluded with this one. Legend of Heroes will, of course, continue, uh, but Cold Steel 4 is going to be a colossal JRPG. Unfortunately, can't really talk about it without delving into heavy spoilers, but guys, Cold Steel just has an amazing storyline. Like, I don't want to be redundant about it, but Cold Steel, the story building and the world building in this game, Legend of Heroes in general, now I know you get the benefit of having all of these games, but there are other games that have a ton of games in their franchise. Trails of Cold Steel 1, if you're starting off with that, starts a little bit slow for the first half because they're really adding depth to the characters, they're fleshing out the characters so you emotionally care about them, and then at that halfway point, stuff just starts going down and the game becomes considerably more action-packed, I would say, and just story the story is just paced at such a fast rate and things are going down all the time and my god that ending on cold steel one what a twist that i can't talk about because i know there's some of you guys that have still not played it but it was excellent so definitely cold steel 4 october 27th excited for that one next up we have doraemon story of seasons doraemon meets story of seasons in a new fresh take on farming japan's door doraemon franchise comes to uh, PS4 in Story of Seasons, a beloved farming simulation series lasting over 20 years. The setting is Naturia, and at the center of this land is the mystical big tree. Doraemon and friends will each take on a role to help around town. Obviously, farming game is pretty in the news these days, and this is one that will be coming to PS4 on September 4th. Next up, we have Windbound. This is coming August 28th. Another game with an awesome visual art style. Shipwrecked alone on an uncharted island, explore, adapt, and navigate the land and perilous seas to stay alive as Kara you are a young warrior caught at sea in a fierce storm adrift from your tribe thrown from your boat at the mercy of the turbulent waters you are tossed onto the shores of the forbidden islands a mysterious paradise with no boat no food no tools just the will and skill to survive uncover this beautiful island's rich resources craft tools and weapons to hunt and defend yourself against nature itself with its wild and fantastical creatures windbound will be out august 28th and again if you're excited for the game definitely add it to your wish list and keep an eye on it a lot of comparisons being thrown around to wind waker but how uh, but is that really a bad thing wind waker was phenomenal and to be getting that kind of 
Live experience on PS4. That'll be great come August 28th. All right, next up, Wasteland 3, August 28th. Pretty excited for this one done by In Exile. In Wasteland 3, you take a command of a squad of Desert Rangers, lawmen, and women in a post-nuclear world trying to rebuild society from the ashes. More than a century after the bombs fell, you're fighting a losing battle to keep your beloved Arizona alive. Then the self-proclaimed patriarch of Colorado radios in, promising aid if you do a job he can only entrust to an outsider. Rescue his land from ambitions of his three blo uh, bloodthirsty children. You're dispatched on a desperate quest from the scorching deserts to the snowy mountains to scra uh, start from scratch, building a new base, finding a new a snow-worthy vehicle, training new recruits, and fighting your way through hostile frozen waters. All the while, you'll have to decide who to trust in this land, torn apart by corruption, intrigue, warring factions, crazed occultists, cutthroat gangs, and bitter sibling rivalries. Build a reputation for yourself by making decisions that will profoundly impact Colorado, its inhabitants, and the story you experience. Will you be Colorado's savior or its worst nightmare? It's a squad-based RPG from In Exile Entertainment featuring a challenging tactical turn-based combat and a deep reactive story full of twists, turns, and brutal ethical decisions that will keep you hooked, whether you're a Wasteland veteran or new to the series. So obviously, this has been around for quite a bit. That was right from the description of the game over on its Steam page. This franchise has been out for a long time. If you guys don't know, Wasteland 3's developer in In Exile has been acquired by Microsoft, but they're going to put this game out on uh, PlayStation 4, and then it will... Uh, I would imagine In Exile will be working on uh, PC and Xbox One titles from there on out. Nevertheless, definitely a game that's going to have a tactics vibe to it, and it's going to be a game with a lot of depth to it. If you're not a fan of strategy RPGs, probably not going to be one you're going to really enjoy, but otherwise, it's going to be one to keep an eye on. Again, it's out August 28th, same day as Windbound, so that is going to be a pretty busy day. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered, in the other hand, comes out August 27th, so just a day before a remastered version of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and this one is pretty interesting because it's adding quite a lot to Crystal Chronicles. Updated visuals, you've got cooperative play online at that, and there's going to be a ton to do in the game as well. Crystal Chronicles, of course, not a mainline Final Fantasy game, but I remember playing this game on, I believe, the GameCube, and I did have a fun time with it. Obviously, you can't go into it expecting a traditional Final Fantasy title, but if you go into it with your expectations tamed, I do think you're going to enjoy it. There's also going to be a trial version of this game that will be released that offers quite a bit, all things considered, uh, for a trial version. There's a reason they're calling it a trial version and not a demo, because it's more than a demo, so that'll be a good way to check it out. Again, this one will be out August 27th. I should also add, if you're a fan of fan service, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles has that in spades, so that's something as well. Pathfinder Kingmaker, August 18th. Pathfinder Kingmaker is the first isometric party-based RPG set in the Pathfinder fantasy universe. Enjoy a classic RPG experience inspired by games like Baldur's Gate, Fallout 1 and 2, and Arachnium. Uh, explore and conquer the stolen lands and make them your kingdom. So this has been a pretty big franchise on PC. Coming to PlayStation 4 and definitely going to be a game to keep your eyes on. This one was uh, came out September 25th of 2018. Mostly positive reception on Steam with 77% positive reviews, 73 on Metacritic, but it will be headed to the PlayStation 4 on August 18th. Next up, here's one I am doubly excited for kingdoms of amalur ray reckoning august 18th i've talked about kingdoms of amalur more times than i can count but it is a fantastic game is it perfect no but it has that fun factor down to a t it's not like a lot of other open world rpgs in the sense that it's a game that you go into and the combat is a little bit slower paced and the game in general is just a little bit slow paced which is fine you got to do your build up in rpgs uh kingdoms of amalur man it just puts you into the fire and the combat is that slick stylish devil may cry style of combat that that is so much fun to play, at least to me. Maybe for you guys, you prefer a turn-based battle system. Maybe you prefer something like a Skyrim or a Fallout, but I was all over Kingdoms of Amalur's gameplay. This one, updated visuals. You're going to have the DLC content as well, and it will finally be out August 18th, and hopefully if this sells well enough, maybe that'll set the table up for a follow-up title as well. Lastly, we have CrossCode. This will be out July 9th. This has already been released on several other platforms, but it is making the transition to PS4 come July 9th, and it's a game that's been received incredibly well. Well, very positive reception on Steam, 7,620 reviews, a 94% positive there, 86. Now, this is very much an RPG that's going to harken back to RPGs of the 
16-bit era, so if you're not into that, you know, maybe let this one slide for a little bit, but CrossCode is a fantastic game if you are into old-school RPGs, and definitely reason to check this one out when it does come to the PS4. Hopefully it's priced well, released at $19.99, and it doesn't go on sale all that often. Right now for the summer sale on Steam, it's only 20% off, so that's kind of interesting to note. Really holding up in price, but it's a high-quality title and still very much worth it. And that's going to conclude this video again. We've got a litany of upcoming PS4 titles, whether it be Cyberpunk 2077, a colossal RPG like that, or a smaller RPG like Chris Tales. A lot of cool stuff coming and more stuff definitely going to be announced. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.